Hey YouTubers, it's your pal Platt, and today I'm going to be drinking a beer from Victory Brewery, based in Downington, Pennsylvania. Uh, the brewery started by two friends back in 1996, and it was built, it was a brew pub built into an old Petrich Farm uh, factory. This uh, particular beer we're drinking today is their Golden Monkey Belgian Style Triple. If you know much about Belgian beers, they have doubles, triples, and quadruples, and each one being progressively higher gravity or higher in alcohol content. This specific one's a triple, and it comes in at 9.5 ABV. You probably notice on top it, that it has a cork in the classic kind of champagne cork stopper, and you would open it the same way. Also, this beer is bottle conditioned. If you've seen any of my previous videos about home brewing and bottling beer, this is done just like we do at home. There's a little bit of yeast inside, unlike the big factory beers where they're forced carbonated. This, there's a little bit of sugar and a little bit of yeast added to the bottom. Now why that's important for us drinking is when you decant it or pour it out, you want to remember that there's going to be a little yeast on the bottom, so you don't want to pour it all the way out. Leave a little bit. And if you're an advanced home brewer, you will know how to harvest that yeast and you can save it and use it for a beer of your own, or if you wanted to make a Belgian triple style like this one, it's a great way to get uh, yeast. Maybe on a later episode I might show you how to do that. But today we're going to drink some beer. So, let's try this one. Do the twist six times like you would champagne. Alright, be, be, be careful, kids. Don't worry though, I'm a pro. Alright. Oh, there we go. Let's get her pour. Alright, now you see we got a nice golden, light copper color. For beer that's 9.5% alcohol, you'd pick something bigger, maybe darker. But it's a nice golden color. Let's give her a try. Oh, that's nice. Plenty of malt. Obviously, at 9.5% alcohol, you're going to have plenty of malt. Plenty of sweet maltiness. Uh, a little bit of the classic Belgian funkiness. If you remember me talking about Saison's, the Belgians, their ales tend to be a little funky, a little different. You get a little bit of that. Definitely some fruity notes. Again, that's from the Belgian style uh, yeast. One thing you probably noticed is I didn't get much of a head on it and that happens sometimes in these bottle conditioned beers so don't be shocked if you had two or three of these and one was a little more carbonated than the other. Uh, again they're not doing it in bulk like you see in the breweries. But overall this is a nice drinkable beer. Uh, I can tell just how many years of beer drinking though this is a big boy. And 9.5% alcohol, it can sneak up on you. So just remember that. Don't uh, don't run out and buy a six-pack of this stuff. But uh, overall, I'm gonna say it's pretty good, pretty good triple, and they uh, stick to the style. Let me get one more sip. Oh, that's good. So the last couple weeks, I've been kind of talking to you about. Something that I think has a, a thread run through it. You know, that, you know, I talked about the microbrew, macrobrew bottle, or the difference between bartenders and mixologists. And the kind of thread between that and a couple other topics I've talked about is, is that there's the kind of common man side of the topic, the macrobrew bartender, and then there's kind of the pretentious side. The mixologist that's into craft brewing and what have you. And I've always spoke that I'm in favor for pushing boundaries. The only way you get better, make better beers, better cocktails, is to push boundaries. But unfortunately what's happened is a certain element has taken over my business. The bartending, brewing, alcohol business, and it's the hipsters. The damn hipsters are killing this business. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if there was a meeting that I missed out or whatever, but all of a sudden now, if you're going to be a craft brewer or a mixologist, 
and you're not an attractive female, you better have a handlebar mustache and wear skinny pants. Now, when I got into bartending 20 plus years ago, it's all because we all watched cocktail and wanted to make cash, do a little bit of flair, and pick up on girls that look like Gina Gershon. But now it's all about brewing beers with couscous and muddling rhubarbs and mojitos or whatever. And I just have one plea. All you hipsters, go away. Just go away. Leave my little world alone. We are all happy, making cash, having fun, doing Grand Marnier shots after work. But now it's just, it's out of control with the pop and sis and everybody's got to wear these skinny suits when you bartend and it's just, it's, it's out of control. And I, I don't know why they, like I said, they picked our little world to come into, whether or not uh, going into the other culinary arts or maybe they should just stick to doing uh, Elvis Costello cover bands or something. But they've unfortunately taken over our world. Um, maybe I'm just getting old and contrary. But that's, that's kind of my rant, and I think it sums up the last couple of weeks is that at the end of the day, we just make beer and make cocktails and it should just be fun. Let's leave all the pretentiousness out. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please share. If you have any comments, and again, you can always tell me I'm wrong because there's a good chance I am. Well, until next time, bottoms up.